this is a really last video of this term and in this video I want to tie in uh, all the work we've done pretty much probably in the last three weeks at least we're going to tie in forces and motion we're going to have a look at how force affects the motion now that's really the heart of the topic in physics that we call mechanics and you're going to be learning a lot about it when you're in grade 10 and now, the first question I like to ask is, what happens when there is no force acting on an object? So imagine a little object, could be a car, could be a person, and there are no forces acting on it, zero forces. Or, alternatively, there are forces acting on it, but the resultant force is zero. Remember last week, okay, we calculated a resultant force, okay? Maybe one thing I forgot to show you is, let's say we have, and that's really actually important, let's just start with that, I'll just pause here for a second. Okay, so we'll start here. And just like we did in the last lesson when you guys were in the class, we have two forces, 10 newton up, 10 newton down. It could be, let's say, weight pulling down on an object, and the reaction force from the floor it's standing on is pointing upward, okay? And I can ask you, what is the resulting force? Okay, I'm sure, I have no doubt, that each one of you will say, oh, that's not a problem. It's going to be 10 Newton up minus 10 Newton down. We subtract them because it's in, they are in opposite uh, direction. And the force will be 0 Newton, okay? Force is 0 Newton. In other words, the resultant force is 0, and we say that the forces are balanced. Okay? So, my question for you now here is, what happens to this object? Okay? How would you describe the motion of this object where the resulting force is zero? Now, when I ask this student, and I'm sure you, you will probably answer the same, most of you will say the object will be stationary. It's not going to be moving. And that's not exactly the right. Okay, so let's have a look at this demonstration. So the reason why when I ask people, students, if there's no force, what happens to the object? The object will not move. Is that we are living in a world of friction. We're dominated with friction. Okay, you know what the friction force is? The force opposing the motion. If I was to push this book over the table, okay, as long as I push it, it will move. Once I stop pushing it, it's not going to move. So you, you'll be allowed to think that, okay, if there's no force, there's no movement. Okay, but the only th reason this is not moving when I'm not pushing it is that there is a friction force that opposes it. So if it was to move, it will be slowed down by the friction force. So I need to keep on pushing it to overcome the friction. What happens if there's no friction? Let's have a look. Right, let's take a gear in what we call an air track. Air track, sorry. It's just like air hockey that I spoke about at the end of last week. Okay? And what I've got here is, you know, it's like a little vehicle, a slider, okay? And you won't be able to see, but there are little holes here. You'll hear this in a second. This is like a small little vacuum cleaner that pushes air out, pushes air out of these holes. It will make a lot of noise, and it will lift this little slider maybe like a millimeter off the track, meaning there won't be any friction, okay? So when I push it now, okay, it moved a little bit, but the friction stop it straight away. There is no other force that opposes the friction, so it will stop moving. But what will happen when I get rid of friction? Let's have a look. guys just a technical difficulty we'll be back with you in a minute okay let's try again Okay, that was much better. 
So when I got rid of friction, eh, the object carried on moving. I gave it a little nudge in the beginning, yes. I did give it a little push. But that was it. I just pushed it once. And then you saw it carry moving backward and forward, backward and forward, getting uh, colliding on each end. And then I put some little rubber bands so it's the push force from the elastic force push it back in. But during the motion between the two sides, there was no forces acting on it. Okay, there was a weight pulling downward, there was a reaction force pushing upward, but the nothing was pushing it into sideways and it kept on moving. Our conclusion is very clear. If the resultant force on an object is zero, the object will carry on in the same speed. If it was stationary to begin with, meaning the speed is zero, it will remain stationary. But if it's already moving with a constant speed or with a speed, it will carry on moving with constant speed. Let's write that down on the board. Okay, so let's write that down on the board, in your book, okay? So this law, which I now tell you is actually Newton's first law of motion, okay? Tells you that if the resultant force in an object is zero, okay, then it will continue moving with the same speed. If it was stationary to begin with, meaning the speed was zero, it will remain stationary. But if it is moving already with a speed, let's say 10 meters per second, then it will continue moving with that speed forever and forever, as long as the resultant force is zero. Okay? Another example you've probably seen maybe in a movie, okay? A person in standing in space doing like a spacewalk, okay? And then he's pushing, I don't know, whatever, a ball, whatever. That ball, because there's no friction, there's no air resistance, there's nothing in space, it will carry on moving, carry on moving forever and ever and ever and ever. Okay? Maybe you saw a spaceman walking and then, you know, they had, they connected with a, a rope to the spaceship. If that rope gets uh, uh, disconnected and somebody pushed that spaceman, then he will carry on and you, you can't, you know, you can try in the air, you know, in, in, in the space, try and swim back, but he can't because there's nothing that will stop it. Okay? Let's write that down. Pause me and write that down. At the same time, now I want to ask another question. If this is Newton first, okay, probably suggest that it's a Newton set, uh, second law. Now we uh, are all Newton second law almost. Okay, we're not gonna. I'm not gonna teach you Newton second law, but I'm gonna bring you a bit closer. Newton second law tells us what happens when there is a force. So if I take uh, uh, this uh, glue and I push it with a force which is stronger than the friction, okay? Think about a car, let's forget the wheel. You're in a car, and there will be push force from the end and push you forward, the thrust, friction and air resistance backward. If the thrust from the engine is larger than the drag, you're pressing the accelerator, okay? What will happen to the car? Well, the hint is in the name. Press the accelerator, the push force is stronger than the, the friction force, the car will accelerate. In other words, a resultant force which is not zero will create acceleration. But sometimes it can oppose the opposite. So let's say now you're driving in the car, okay? Now you drive at constant speed. The push force from the engine is equal to the friction, okay? Air resistance together, so you're traveling at constant speed. Now you see somebody crossing the road, you want to stop. What do you do? You press the brakes. What does pressing your brake do? Increases the friction. So now the friction is larger than the uh, push force from the engine. What happens to the car? Okay, the resultant force now is not zero, okay? But it's opposing the motion. It's in the other direction of motion, the car will decelerate. Let's write that down. Okay, so please write that down, okay? When the result is from second law, almost. It's not, there's something I need to add to get to Newton's second law, but you'll learn that in grade 10, I think. When the resultant force is not equal to zero, the object will either accelerate or decelerate, okay? Depending on which direction is the force, okay? Now, what I would like you to do, okay? You guys are gonna do this worksheet over here. Now, I am gonna talk, I'm gonna talk you through and I'll solve it on, on the video. But it is really, really important that before you listen to my explanation, you have a go at it by yourself. You have a go at each one of them by yourself first, then you listen to me and, and see if you got it right, okay? See you in a bit. Right, so now hopefully you had a go at A, B, C, D, and E, okay? The 
these ones. And what you're going to do there, you first of all draw free body diagram, okay? And then you have to uh, uh, decide, you also have to show the sizes of the forces, okay? Which one is bigger, okay? And then you need to describe what happens to the objects. Well, the questions are not phrased as ideal as I would do them in a test, but we'll go through it together. So the first one is a car. Now, unfortunately, you know, um, let's put it this way. They didn't tell you if the car is speeding up, accelerating, decelerating, constant speed. Okay? In a test, I will specify. And, and in this case, I'm actually going to show you four free body diagrams for all three cases. So let's start, say that the car is accelerating in this direction. In this direction. They're all moving to the right. The car is moving to the right. But in the first case, it's accelerating. That means it's speeding up. Now, I'm going to have, yeah, I'm going to have your weight and your uh, normal force up and down, and they must be equal because they're balancing each other out. The cars are moving upward and forward, uh, backward, downward, they're not decelerating, so that must be balanced. Now we've got the push force or thrust from the engine to the right, direction of motion, and we've got friction backward, friction drag. Now if the car is accelerating to the right, that means that there, there is a resultant force to the right. Okay? Otherwise, if it, wasn't accelerate, if it wasn't accelerating, the forces would be bad. So the friction and the air drag must, the, the, the drag must be backward, but they must be smaller than the thrust. You see, until now, you couldn't tell which one is bigger. Now you know, using Newton's second law. The car is accelerating, there must be a resultant force to the right, so the thrust, engine thrust, must be bigger than the drag. Now, for constant speed, okay, the normal force and the weight are still balanced. I'm not going to even label them now. Okay? But now because the car is moving in constant speed, the resultant force must be zero. Okay? And therefore these two forces must be the same. Okay? And when the car is decelerating, decreasing, okay? again these forces are the same. But now the friction, okay? the friction and the drag must be bigger than, you can see they're bigger than the engine thrust. So now you are able to know, not to calculate how much they are, but you can tell which force is bigger. You need to know that when the car is accelerating forward, the thrust must be bigger than the drag. When it's moving constant speed, they must be equal. When the car is decelerating, the thrust must be smaller than the drag. Let's move on with the swimmer. Okay, a swimmer, let's say he's moving constant speed. So we're going to have uh, his weight downward, okay? Something is pushing him up. That's not a normal force. When we're in water, we call this up thrust, we say, okay? Right, that swimmer is moving to the left. So we're going to have, a, a, we can call it a push, okay? He pushes himself forward or, or the water pushes him forward. And then we're going to have a backward force, which we call water resistance, okay? And because I just randomly said that he is swimming, swimming constant speed, these forces must be equal as well. If I said he was accelerating, then obviously the push force will be bigger. If we said we he's slowing down, the water resistance will be bigger. Right, the next one, I think that's the hardest one, is the puck. Okay, you can see a picture of a puck moving on ice, let's say on ice. Okay, so not, not it's a hockey, they're playing ice hockey. Okay, now the ice hockey or the puck. Okay, just like, just a second, just like my slider here, okay, you can see the stick hit the puck, but at this moment, it's not touching it. So nothing is pushing that puck, just like that slider was on the, on the air track. In other words, there are no push forces. The only forces we have is weight, and we have normal or reaction force from the, from the ice. There are no, the, the stick is not pushing it anymore. It did push it in the past when it was in contact with it, but now it's not in contact with it. So these are the only forces acting on it, and these forces must be equal. Let's move on to the next example. Okay, the next example is this guy, this baller, just throwing the cricket, the cricket, okay? And he's just in this position. The ball is still in his hand, okay? So the first force, which is always there on planet Earth, is the weight. Okay? That's definitely there. But obviously now, we also have a force from our hand, push force. And the push force 
is maybe horizontal, maybe it's more like this, it depends, but it's, it's in, to the right, okay, so that will be push force from the right, okay, there probably will be also some kind of drag, okay, but the ball is still accelerating, we're making it move faster, okay, so the push force should be larger than the drag, okay, the last example, okay, okay that was an A, that was B, and then the last example is the boarding ball going towards the pin. Okay? Now, again, that's on the floor. Okay? So we're going to have our weight and the normal force. But I know, guys, this ball is moving fast, but there's no push. Anything is pushing it forward. We pushed it when it was in the hand, but the hand is not there anymore. So there's no push forward to the right, push force to the right. What we do have is friction. You've got some kind of friction, and you can even write air, uh, air resistance or drag, okay? But it's not balanced by any kind of forward force, okay? Right, guys, that's it. Just make sure you uh, write all that down, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Enjoy the holiday. Yippee! Okay, Mon yeah, we'll, we'll give you some instructions later about when anything else that I'd like you to do. Enjoy your holiday, guys.